Okay, so I'm learning MongoDB, a document-based database, and I was able to get MongoDB on a Rails app using Mongo Record in four quick steps, and I'm going to show you those here in a four-minute screencast. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a Ruby on Rails app. You've seen this probably many times on the internet. I just created the application Tron, and now I'm creating a database called Tron Development. From here, I am going to generate a scaffolding with a field of, let me see, let me grab this over here and paste it so I don't screw up the typing. I'm going to generate a scaffolding of program with a field name of string, a very simple Rails app. Once that's been generated, I now can migrate my database. This little operation here goes away completely in document-based databases because they are schemaless. And once I've migrated the database, I should have a working Rails app. So I will boot this application really quick just to show you that it's working. And for some completeness, go down to my browser. So what is it? Uh, for programs, and you should see a app. And there it is. And I will go ahead and put a record in this. This particular instance is a MySQL app. And I will add a record, Tron. So I have my first program in my database of Tron programs. Now, for the first of all steps here, I'm since I have a, a MySQL database, I am going to create a schema file for this particular application because Mongo record, although it's schemaless, requires a schema file. So I've just created that file and that's my first step. So I, I dumped the schema of what I was working with. You can write your own, but it was very simple. The second is obviously I need to go out and get Mongo record. Um, I'm installing it as a plugin through GitHub. Once that's installed, I'm going to go into a couple directories here, uh, into the plugins directory, and for completeness in the README, I'm going to move or rename the, the folder to Mongo Record. So I'm good to go there. So my first two steps are generate a schema file. The second one was to actually grab the plugin. And now I'm going to move along to the third and fourth steps here in TextMate. So one file we need to edit here is the database.yaml file. There's the standard MySQL one that was generated with the Rails command. I'm going to go ahead and put in, it's a very simple syntax here for the, the YAML file, which, there we go, uses the Mongo adapter and uses the database test, which I have a Mongo database with a database of test already created. Second thing here is you need to go into the model of your application into one of the models and you need to establish a connection to that database. And once you've done that, it's pretty simple. You, you're establishing the connection to the database test, which is glued to the database.yaml file. You are all done. So to reiterate, our four steps were one, create a schema file, two, go out and get the plugin, three, edit your database.yaml, and four, update your model. So to show you this runs, I'm going to run this here. I'm going to go down to the browser. I should also show you here that Mongo is running. So MongoD is running there in the background. This is showing you there it's running and I will go to the application and boot it. Now remember I put Tron in before which is not there so you know it's pointing to another um, database and I'm going to go ahead and put in a few records and you'll see I have basically all the crud happening much like I do um, with Active Record and other databases using uh, Mongo Record on uh, MongoDB. So this is very simple. Um, this is just one of those things that I was able to get working quickly that made me excited about using uh, MongoDB. It's a still a bit of a board cube uh, for me but it uh, seems very powerful and what it can do and this is just a simple demonstration of of Mongo record